Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. How are you? So in this video, we are going to show you how you can maximize one page in mail merge so that one page will have more than one data coming from your Excel file. So as you may be familiar with mail merge, mail merge will pick up one row of data and send it to one page in MS Word. So what if, what I want to happen is that one page should have four IDs, for example, which means that I will have to bring in four rows of data into just one page in MS Word. You can also use this uh, solution if, for example, you want to create a certificate. And let's say that the certificate you want is just half a page and you want to maximize the paper that you will print. So you will print two certificates in one paper. So how are you going to send two rows of data from your Excel file going to the MS Word file one page. And there's a lot of applications that you can think of here, like whenever you want to limit or sort of like utilize an entire page and have more than one row of data transferred from your Excel okay, to that Word document using Mail Merge. Now we're going to show you a sort of like a workaround rather than a solution that is intended to do this. So we start by, of course, having our layout in uh, MS Word. So I already have my first design here and I'm going to group this, okay, elements together. So this is these are just shapes, images, and text boxes that I assembled together to create an ID. So of course, if you have a design that you are using, you can use MS Word to put, at, uh, put those designs in just one page. Now, one very important aspect of your design is it must have a text box wherein the details from MS Word will be transferred into. So in this case, I have this text box for name and section where I'm planning to transfer the data from Excel going to those text boxes. Okay, so now that uh, we have our layout and the important text boxes, we will then group these elements together. So we simply have to highlight, okay, these elements. You can just use your... Uh, control key or your shift key to click the elements one by one make sure you do not miss anything and right click okay and choose group so we're going to group them together so that if we need to multiply or duplicate this uh, image we simply have to click on the entirety of the group and then copy and then paste Okay, so we're going to lay it out so that we maximize the areas, okay, of the page. So I now on my third one. Okay, and one more. Paste. Okay. Oops, this one got pushed. All right, and there you have it. You now have our four uh, layouts, okay, in one page so the next is of course you have to save this so that in case you made a mistake you can always go back to this now the next part is we have to then process our excel file because remember one row of data gets transferred to one page in uh, ms word so we sort of like just have to work around that rule so what we're going to do is if you want four pieces of information going to one page then the idea is you have to put four parts as well in one row. So by putting in four, okay, then that means four okay, information will be transferred to one page in MS uh, Word. So you just have to sort of like find a way to mark like the headers here. I'm going to put here name two, name three, grid in section three. Uh, name four so that it's going to be easy later to uh, identify which data you want or which are partners okay in your data so now that i have this three extra data and take note i'm just going to use two columns you can do this with more than one field or more than uh, two fields if you want you simply have to multiply the columns the way that i did here so if you have three columns of data then that means you have to do as well three columns okay multiplied into four um, similar columns and then we have to divide the data that we have into this four columns
columns or four tables that we have. So right now, upon checking, I have 49 okay, uh, data here. So it's not divisible by 4. But anyway, let's proceed with this. So if this is 49 and I have 4 pages, so that means I need at least 12 okay, rows of data for each column or table. So I'm going to get 4 Okay, at 12, I mean, okay, of this, and then cut this and send this to my second column. I'm going to distribute it again. So 4, 8, and then 12, and then cut it and paste it here. And this one, okay, I need to get only 12. So I will, this means that I will have one page wherein I only have one data because by the number of students that I have in this file is not divisible by four. So anyway, at least we managed to um, group okay, some of the information together in just one row. That's the idea here. And then, of course, we want to save this. And remember where you save this because the next step is for us to locate this file within MS Word. So first, you have to close this processed Excel file. And then in MS Word, you then go to the mailings tab. We are now going to start the mail merge. So we're going to go to mailings. And then under mailings, we have to click select recipients. So under select recipients, you have to use an existing list because we already have an Excel file, which is sort of like our existing list. And we have to locate the file in our computer. So it's in my documents. So I'm now identifying that this file here is the file where the data will come from. Then your MS Word will prompt. If you have more than one worksheet in your Excel file, you have to make sure to choose the correct worksheet where that processed uh, names of students are. And then click OK. Now it seems like nothing happened. But if you go back to mailings, you will notice that many of the fields are now active, which means that there is an Excel file connected okay, to our MS Word. Now we're going to bring in okay, the fields where the data will be entered in our ID. So the first is, of course, this name field over here. We're going to highlight it and then go to mailings. And we're going to insert one of the merge fields. And it's going to be the first name that we have. And that will be replaced by a field okay, for name. We're going to do the same for a section. So highlight and then mailings and then go to insert merge field and then choose the gradient section for that name. Now we're going to do the same for the rest. So for this one here should be mailings again, insert a merge field. But this time we're going to choose name number two. And then for the second text box for that ID, I will choose mailings again and assign the corresponding gradient section. So you just have to do the same procedure for name number three and section number three as well. So let's go to mailings and then insert merge field three. And then this one over here, highlight, and then go to mailings. And then that one is for number three. So just to do this, I just need to do this one more. Okay. All right, so we're almost done, and we now have the four uh, data from one row distributed into the ID in one page. So if you're starting to get the idea of how to do this, great. So I'm now going to start the mail merge uh, further. So I'm going to have your mail, and then I'm going to sort of like preview the results first. So mailings and then preview results, and now we're getting four rows of data transferred to just one page. And let's see how the other page are going. So we're now getting more, okay. Uh, unfortunately, if you're thinking of like how to do this with the pictures of the students, that's something that we cannot do really with mail merge. Mail merge is only allowed to pick up words. Now, remember we have an extra data. So let's see what will happen to that. So that will be the last uh, page that we have. And since it doesn't have any corresponding um, second, third, and fourth uh, columns or table, then they will just be blank. Okay, 
So with that, at least we're happy now that we only will consume less paper instead of printing this one by one. We can then go to finish and merge and then go to print directly. Or if you want to have a preview of the file, then you have to go to edit individual documents. Take note that if you're going to do this, edit individual documents, then it means that you're finalizing your mail merge and you cannot do anything about it anymore afterwards. So we're going to click edit individual documents. So we're now being asked whether which of the records we want to transfer to our new document. And of course, we want all okay, of the records and then click OK. So now we have this file we're in. It now multiplied the data or the page into several pages, each with data coming from the rows of Excel. And that's how we create a sort of like a workaround in mail merge, okay, in order to distribute more than one piece of information to one page in MS Word. So you simply have to uh, prepare your Excel document, okay, so that each row contains the number of information that you want okay, to be transferred in one page. Now, I hope this video helped you if this is the problem that you are trying to solve. If this video helped you in some way, we appreciate your comments. And if ever you have questions, you can also use the comment section. And if we would also appreciate a like and subscribe to the channel. This helps us uh, push further to create more videos for you. But for now, this is it. Okay, And if you have any questions, okay, feel free to use the comment section and we'll try to answer as soon as we can. For now, that's it, and I will see you in the next video.